Hi everyone and welcome to Mad Tech UK's review of the MX Keys range of keyboards from Logitech. We've got the standard MX Keys in graphite and we've got the recently released MX Keys for Mac in the apple space grey colour. Um, and you can see it also comes in the lovely white box, so very Apple orientated. We're going to open both of these up because I've been really curious to see how these fare against Apple's Magic Keyboard um, and compare the features and see really why we've got the two different MX Keys keyboard variants uh, and what's different about them. First thing I noticed as soon as I got it out of the box, it's quite weighty. There is a really distinct difference, albeit it is larger, but a very distinct weight difference against the Magic Keyboard. There's a close up shot of the color contrast difference. So the space gray against the standard aluminum finish. Um, the Logitech keyboards are a plastic finish, but they're painted to look metallic. Let's pull that one out of the way. And let's bring in the MX Keys keyboard just next to it. And let's run through the brief differences between these two keyboards. So the standard MX Keys keyboard comes in what, they, what they're touting as graphite, and the MX Keys for Mac is the space gray black keys. In terms of features, same charging facility, USB-C at the top with the switch to turn it on. So the MX Keys for Mac has the double-ended USB-C charging cable, which is okay, but I must admit I have less charging uh, units that have a USB-C dedicated slot on them, um, or even if I do, I'm still tending to use the old style USB port, which is the cable that comes with the MX Keys keyboard. Um, the other main differences are around the key layouts. So the MX Keys keyboard has a nod to both operating systems. So you've got the dual function keys that give you the Windows key versus its Apple equivalent here, such as the start key, option key, alt and command. Um, you also get some differences on the keyboard just above the arrow key. So you've got a page up and page down, home, end, insert and delete, whereas on the Apple equivalent, they're denoted as the arrows that you would get on an Apple keyboard. Um, in terms of the other differences, you've got more dual function keys that show the split as to what uh, character set you would expect on OS X versus Windows. And across the top, you've got the function keys, which um, are very slightly different. You've got the same brightness keys. You've got a slight difference in the middle in that you've got a show desktop key just here, which you don't have on the MX Keys for Mac keyboard. Instead, that has an eject key. However, all of the function keys, and indeed the shortcut keys across the top here, are all fully configurable in the software. So in the Logitech Options software, you can assign functions across the board to these. Both support three Bluetooth or Logitech unifying receiver devices that you can connect to. And inside the box, you get the receiver that you can plug in. Now, I connect via Bluetooth because I'm connecting both to my iPad, my iPhone, and to my Mac. So I can happily switch between these on Bluetooth. Now, there's a rather interesting side effect I find of the colors here. The MX Keys for Mac keyboard is specifically in the space gray to blend with space gray Apple products. That is the Space Gray iPad Pro. And from my perspective, it looks more like the MX Keys standard keyboard blends with it color-wise, whereas the Space Gray here um, is probably more akin to the Space Gray of the laptops, for example. But if they're trying to make this Space Gray match with the Space Gray that you're getting on Apple devices, there is quite a difference. There is the graphite iPhone 12, which is quite different in color, depending on how the light shines against it, 
but is almost identical to the standard MX keys. Those are the main differences. Connection, software, and functionality, otherwise they are identical. If I power these up, I have connected to my system. They have both got the really useful backlight feature. So let's just dim the light slightly so that you can see that more easily. And you should see as well that it's motion sensing. So up comes that and I can increase the brightness just here. Pass over this one. And on come the lights. Personal preference as to what you go for. Um, I'm swaying towards actually the standard MX keys, even though it's going to be connecting to my Mac. Uh, and it isn't the dedicated MX keys for Mac because really the functionality is the same and I'm preferring the slightly darker color around the edge. Both have a lovely key press. They, there is a really good amount of feedback to those keys. They are slightly indented on each of the keys, which gives a really nice feel to the finger as you press into them. Um, there is there is a nice amount of travel to the keys. Um, I also use an MX Master mouse. Now the other comparison here, of course, is how do either of these, whichever you choose, fare against Apple's Magic Keyboard. Now I'm just going to pick the MX keys for Mac keyboard for my comparison here. Move this one out of the way and pop this one in here. So comparison wise, obviously there's the size difference. There is a wealth of extra functionality, this side of the keyboard and the ability to swap devices, which you cannot do with the Apple Magic Keyboard. But what is the benefit? Are there any pros and cons to this? Um, obviously the Magic Keyboard is good if you want to keep it close to your mouse. You've got the small form factor. You can keep your desktop quite close together. Um, one of the reasons I've actually changed is because I actually have quite broad shoulders. Um, I am happy to have the extra space and to be able to type here and move over here. Um, and I was actually finding my shoulders were starting to hurt, keeping my desktop almost too close together. So it's kind of the reverse for me. I want to spread my desktop out slightly. But I also wanted a slight change in terms of things like the angle of elevation. So the Magic Keyboard is very, very shallow profile. Hopefully this will show up okay. But the side of the MX Keys keyboard has just a slight more angle to it, raises up slightly for a little bit extra comfort when using it. The keys sound a little bit nicer as you type them. There's a bit more of a clunk to the Magic Keyboard and a much softer sound, even hitting them at the same level. It's a softer sound on the Logitech keyboard, um, which is just makes for a slightly nicer working environment. In terms of the functionality, the light up keyboard, um, especially if you're working late or you're working with restricted light, or you just want a little bit more comfort on the eyes if you have to look at the keyboard at all, makes those numbers stand out and is a feature the Magic Keyboard doesn't have. Even if you buy some of the more expensive variants of the Magic Keyboard that have the number pad at the side, they don't light up. So again, massive kudos to Logitech for including that. The sensor for the lighting is also really cool. You can see it dim just there and you've only really got to just pass your hand over and it lights straight back up again. Go up to maximum there. It lights straight back up again. The sensor works regardless of where you move into the keyboard. So even if you just come to the side, it all lights up, which is a fantastic feature. Um, I feel hands down for the price as well, you're getting a lot more functionality and a much nicer keyboard than Apple's default keyboard here. So I managed to get the MX keys for Mac and the standard MX keys for £90 each. The Magic Keyboard retails usually for around £100, so the price difference, negligible really between them, but in terms of the amount of features that you get on this keyboard, quite honestly, it's a winner for me. 
I'll be getting rid of the magic keyboard. Um, in the same way that the magic mouse, whilst being a good mouse, I much prefer the MX Master mouse, largely from an ergonomic perspective. It, it the shape of it, the functionality with all the buttons, it's ease to hold in the hand it is a lot for me more preferable than the Magic Mouse. The Magic Mouse is a great mouse, but it feels more like a travel mouse in that sense. So I have completely replaced my desktop with the Logitech suite here um, and can certainly give this a thumbs up. As I say, we'll add one part to the review, which will be the uh, how the Bluetooth has fared over time. Um, but the, the last thing I will also say about the comparison to the Magic Keyboard, and this one's a really simple one, but it, I'm reminded of it as soon as I looked here, is the spacing of the arrow keys. The up down keys are so squashed on this keyboard, whereas you have got that little bit more space here to work. Definitely a winner. So where are we at after two weeks of usage? Well, as you can see, my preference has been to go with the graphite variant of the keyboard, the standard MX keys version. Obviously completely compatible with Mac OS X, um, but as somebody who needs to dip occasionally into Windows usage, it is handy to see the dual function keys, just as a reminder. The other reason being, and I'm keeping them in shot, the color comparison to my existing devices, um, why not? For the sake of it, given the MX keys in Space Gray is meant to be the best for color compatibility, I'm actually preferring the graphite one to match my other devices. Um, so yeah, I've been using it for a couple of weeks. I've not had any issues in terms of Bluetooth dropout. The only thing that I have noticed, and that's actually more my fault than anything else, is that when I turn the keyboard off overnight to conserve any battery power, I forget to turn it back on and I'm used to actually keeping my Magic Keyboard permanently on. So when I log into the system, um, I get a little message prompting me that no keyboards have been detected. I have to flick this on and within a couple of seconds, it's recognized the keyboard again. So that's, that's the mistake that I'm making at the moment because I'm always leaving the Magic Keyboard on. In terms of battery life, I didn't charge the keyboard initially when I started using it. Um, and I use it for quite a few hours a day and I initially got seven days out of the battery life before it prompted me to charge. So that was not charged uh, as soon as I'd opened the box and I just left it to run for that amount of time. Um, I plugged the keyboard cable in and as soon as I plugged it in, you can carry on using it while it's plugged in at the top, which is great. Um, and back to a full battery. So I've used the Logitech Options software um, to set up the keys. So I've got the calculator I've left as the default. Rather than screen capture, I'm using the camera button to open photos and I open notes with this little note icon down here. The rest I've pretty much set as the defaults. The show desktop option can either do that or in my case I've set that to be my notifications on the Mac rather usefully. Otherwise everything else is working as you'd expect. There's one final point to note. Um, when first setting it up. If you use the, the Bluetooth connection, uh, it will ask you to input a number into the keyboard to verify your connection. And I was doing that and it wasn't connecting and I realized I should have read the complete text because after you enter the number, you do need to make sure you hit the enter or return key before hitting connect again on the system to make sure it connects to your keyboard. Um, once I got past that hurdle, it was all connecting absolutely fine. That was my fault for not reading the small print. Um, other than that, I can definitely recommend this keyboard. And obviously, should you happen to go for one of the MX Master mice as well, as a fantastic replacement to Apple's own setup. Thanks for watching. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to post them.